Hello, you ladies and gentlemen of dear friends, lady or audience. Welcome to the new Archipelago show. Oh, thank you very much. Me, all the same, your host, plays the Knicks run. Hear all Asian guests starring Choo Choo Yamamoto. Famous Riddle Guy and Rosanna Ortiz, Filipino Bagong Bagong Starlet. Uh, here come uh, to uh, Hiderio Gumpa, down home song stylist. Uh, hello, 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 everybody. Hello. Also, of course, your friend of mine, uh, four or five crazy guys, all the way from uh, Riddle Tokyo. Okay, friend, you take a listen now, all people, Radio Eastern Educational Service. We're going to fry now, you bet! Yeah. This is lots of fun. This show will go all the way around the world. Come well. back uh, out of your radio right now. You suddenly have become uh, strange music into my ear. Nice. This, uh, I think, Clockwork Orange is playing in other studio. Not to know. No, uh, no, I didn't. Did they? Did they come on boats? Is it? Uh... Well, you have to if you want to have enough kids, uh, so that you can start a great country like this. You know, uh, you got to come over somehow. The cows uh, came leave. over by way of the Virginia colonists at Jamestown. There was a law passed uh, by the Massachusetts colony requiring every six immigrants to bring one cow. Sick immigrants, did you say, Charles? <laughs> and the cow today was just voted the national animal of Wisconsin in, in place of the pig. There was a big debate about it. Yeah. Oh. Well, I think we just land. Yeah. Oh. Say. Don't we'll... open door. We must test air first. We can serve this cheese log now because we're down to room temperature. Did you fellas know that the first prison in America was mm -hmm. built on Nantucket Island, Massachusetts? And just to show you those old folks weren't wasting any time, it was built in 1676. It was actually built on Nantucket, who was a young girl <laughs> who had come over with the first shipment of cows and their young children. And in cheese log. Uh, it came over on a cheese log. On, on, the, on the SS over. cheese log. The Con Ra. Yeah, it was, the, it was uh, the sister ship of the Mayflower. It didn't get as much promotion, of course, because it hadn't signed with Warner Brothers yet, you see. Mm -hmm. It was just, it came over with the Mayflower and landed south, down around Savannah, you know. And that's where all the cows ran free, and now one of them is governor of the state. That right. No, no. Is he the one who closed all the prisms? That's right, that's right. Uh, too much light in the prisms, he said, and so we're going to have to close them up, right? They won't let certain colors in the prisms anymore down south, you know? <laughs> that right. Green and yellow lights not allowed in the prisms uh, south of the Mason-Dixon line. Well, yeah. you know, they're trying to keep from being infrared down there. You've know? <laughs> got to watch it very carefully. I infra-dig, baby, I infra-dig. That's right. Were you going to say something? I was Choo -choo? going to say all my relatives now they're all home now because they, there's certain uh, colors not allowed in the prison. So all these people are hanging around my house watching TV and drinking all the beer in the refrigerator now, you know. Turning uh, out the lights. Yeah, we're going to move, though. We're moving to Canada. We're going to have a Stanley right. party and then we're going to ship Yeah, a too. steamer party, right? You're going to no, get all steamed party. and uh, go to steam Canada. Steamed up and you heard of steam clams, right? Well, yeah. we steam the cans, you the beer been, cans. You ever so. been to Nantucket? I've been with Nantucket. At this beer steaming. Under the jail, yeah. yeah oh, that little fun, room down there, yeah. yeah. Did you that's say when you... you used to be able to get into jails. Now they don't let nobody in there. Only the know. light people can get into prisms know, now, man. you know. <laughs> that's right. the truth. That's and true. ultraviolet people. Well, yeah. All those New York actresses, you know. <laughs> that's the only ones that let in the prison now. <laughs> that's and, right. Uh, you got to be a movie star to get in prison. It's the color of their hair. Yeah. has to do with that, you know. Yeah, and the cows, of course, too. Sure. What about those cows? Well, well uh, let's, let's just hear it. For you cows. know, the war against the cows is over, boys. Uh, you know, uh, in India, you know, it's against the law to kill a cow. 
You know that, don't you? Yeah, it's, yeah, against, you it's against the, guy, the law of the just, cows. <laughs> right, the yeah. cows don't like People it. don't pay any attention no, to it. They kill all. them all the time, but cows I haven't murdered each other in India no. for centuries. If you, if you are run down by a cow that's driving a car, the cow is indebted to you for the rest of, you, of its life. Indented to, to, to you, no, I think. You're is. dented, but the cow is indebted to you. Yeah, that's right. The cow catchers, you know. You know why they put cow catchers on trains, don't you? Put them in prison, that's why. <laughs> that's yeah. right. That's right. The only scoop way you can scoop them up and put them in prison. Once they come over on the Mayflower. What was the name of that ship? The Cheese Law. The Cheese the Flower. SAS Cheese yeah. Flower. That's right. <coughs> they Actually, ran wild and they'd all be governor now. In fact, they're so popular, you know. Well, they all will be governor because a cow can't be governor of Georgia for more than one day at a time. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. But well, he's he got to eat too much. They well, he, eat he, eat he eats and the governor of the day stomachs, before. you know. <laughs> Yeah, what are we going to do with a governor with six stomachs? We better put him back into office, you know, because he's a lot more dangerous out of office than I he know, is in I know, I know. He ate all the rose bushes around the governor's mansion. And that's the senators. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> I know, I know. I was descended from them. Ever since the flowers got the vote, you know. Oh, yeah. They yeah. got the vote, too. The flowers got the vote now, too. What yeah. about the flies? <laughs> The, the flies can't vote because they's too radical, you know. No yeah. fries in our China. That's we it. got a rid of all fry. How is that you do that? We fry them. You f <laughs> fry them to where? Oh, no, we fry them to eat. To put in stomach of a cow. Right. Oh, he liked that. He said, I want the mow. I want the mow. Oh, no, fly mow cow. Right? All cow in China, they say mow, not the moo. Everybody in China <laughs> say mow. You bet in a big chorus, too. No, oh. can't bet in China. I was thinking, you know, we could get the old Coliseum and go down there and get a lot of people in for free into the Coliseum. I mean, we'd have to pay them a couple of dollars for the rental, you know. But then all of our friends could come down there for free, and then we could get all those marching bands, you know. And we could, we could start them all marching from the peristyle end of the field. Would, yeah, God, and then we could have the other half, the yeah. Illinois band at the other end of the field. At top speed. And we got 40 cameras covering. Oh. We got the blimp hovering overhead. <laughs> certainly is a confusing day down here, Charles. Literally thousands of unmarked bands have entered the Coliseum now. Marching groups and girls who will not allow themselves to be identified by the television cameras are now appearing down on the ground. Well, it's just amazing the way the audience is cooperating with us, Joe. You can see over on the other side, the flashcard section has made a giant picture of Eleanor Roosevelt there. <laughs> Governor Roosevelt, did you say, Charles? Uh, Mrs. Governor. The, That's right. The, the governor's wife is being honored today, as you know, uh, because of the uh, cheese log event, which is happening later. Yes, well, as you can see, the uh, girls' corps of Torrance is forming a great cheese log down on the field now. Uh, can see it. It's a big That's a That's picture of Mrs. Roosevelt. That's a cheese going to throw There's out the, the nose. First cheese there's, a, there's a lovely float that you'll notice coming around now. That's a giant. Uh, it looks like a Coca-Cola bottle, but actually, it's made into the replica of the man who invented the Coca-Cola bottle, uh, Earl R. Dean. You see, there's his face. You can see it right now. He's dead. Do he yes, die? Yes, died last week. And well, this is kind and, of a and uh, you're talking float. about those floats, you know. Here comes the aspirin float coming around here. Did you know this is, of course, honoring that great uh, German pharmacologist, uh, Hermann Dresser. He was a fine dresser, and he did invent the aspirin because uh, he wore hats that were too tight, actually. That was a problem. Look at that uh, flashcard section over there, Larry. Uh, it's flashing a word. I think I can read it now. Eton Schurdlu. Yes. Schurdlu yes. for president. Schurdlu That's quite president, true. Charles. And the president is going to be here, Larry, as you know, a little later on after Mrs. Roosevelt leaves. Richard Milhouse Washington will be with us later on, the resident of the United States. Uh, he can't be with us right now. Uh, after his trip from China, he's going to make a brief appearance on the Merv Griffin Show. Did you That's right, he's off the air. What? That's why everything went silent. Was that it? That's it, right. That's it. I was going to say something about Mrs. Roosevelt uh, uh, that I found in the newspaper, I think a very unique uh, story. Mrs. Roosevelt, whom you, some of you may remember, wrote that she kept her memory sharp by eating three chocolate-covered garlic balls every day for mm -hmm. breakfast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Best way to keep away. the Japanese away, you know. <laughs> well, it certainly kept uh, her husband away for a long time there, if you believe what you read these days, you know. Frank uh, just couldn't come around for breakfast owing to the chocolate, hated chocolate. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> the man was president of the United States. Of course he had problems. I mean, you can't have a big job like that with 
without having headaches, you know what I mean? I mean, it is a right. headache, right? It's invented aspirin, isn't yeah. it, right here? And it's enough, you know, trying to find a way to get us into a war, sending our ships out to be torpedoed by the Germans in 1939. Did you read that? Yeah, I Did read that, read yeah. But having to come to breakfast and smelling Eleanor's breath, I mean, you know, chocolate garlic for breakfast, it, I mean... He was a big man. He took a lot, you know, but that was just too much. It drove him insane. Went down to Georgia. That would scare him. Yes, I'm sorry. You're trying to get in awful hard there. It was that. It was not the uh, garlic that that bothered him. It was the chocolate. Couldn't stand it. Franklin never could stand chocolate. Reminded him of his prison days. His prison days? Yeah, I he never probably never knew that, that, no, that, that no. Der Schnifter was in prison, did no, you? No, let's yeah. bring this to order here. He was, in, uh, he was in the Purge prison, in the Beer Hall Purge prison on Nantucket. you know where that is? Yeah, that's uh, right near our icebox where we keep all the cows. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> right, is well, it Frank. Is that all the mirrors what? in his house were Would turned you? facing the wall? <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> so he could comb the back of his hair? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't have any personal Mother knowledge. told me that was true. Well, who, was your mother uh, related to the uh, yeah, Roosevelt? She was, she was a cleaning woman for Mr. Roosevelt. I see, a very clean woman. <laughs> Filipino woman. Mother, Really? <laughs> Really, uh, uh, do you know any uh, Filipino? A bang a lang a lang a dang? No, no, I just speak with this Filipino accent. I, I never see. learned the language. I see. Well, you certainly don't look very Filipino. You look like a cow. Let me turn around and comb my hair up. Look. Oh, God, don't hey. look in that mirror. Well, you see, he turned into a cow. That's what happens here in these mysterious dark nights that surround us here at the yes. pit of gloom. Certainly not mysterious. Most politicians do turn into cows, David, you know, after being in office four or eight years, you know, being filled with all that... Uh, you playing linguistic games you get with me? in five of your six stomachs. You mean they're cowed, is what left. you mean. They're cowed, cowed, cowed by their experience. stomachs. It's not six terms of office, it's six stomachs. Well, they yeah. don't have the stomachs to be in office more than four or eight years. All the chocolate and the garlic that a politician... It drives them experience. crazy. It drives them to New Jersey, which is even worse, you know. It is near the prison under Nantucket, you know. I know, yeah. How is Nan now? Nan is crushed by the experience. I can understand that. I've heard uh, word from our engineering department that it's time now for... To build that separation, again. Yes, so oh. let's go right on down there, down the line, right now. You're going to have to cut that out. <laughs> Wanna hear the 
singing, singing, singing for the Singing, singing, singing Singing, singing, holy, holy, holy Cause elves believe in God Cause they know that there's a possibility They might die in the fog And they think of fortunes on the run Singing about the People, the commune. Thanks, uh, Judas Christ, a superstar, Bakersfield, the commune, for incredible lid of grass. Oh, now time for a short uh, advertisement. Hano ang in the hanap ko sa lalaking umi inom? Well, let's find out by asking our guest, Miss Rosanna Ortiz. What about that, Rosanna? I admire a man whose drinking is not a vice. Rather, a nice way of killing time mm -hmm. and his friends, or mm -hmm. with his friends, <laughs> or for toning up his body. Well, uh, Rosanna, does your ideal man have to be a professional? Not really, David. As long as he's got an honorable job, and most important, if he's igniggling, as they say, Hindi sabit? Yes, that's right, of course. Well, would his standard of living necessarily have to be high? No, as long as he is. You see, he's got to be a man of simple tastes. You see, what's really important is the kind of man he is. You know, solid, Jackson, with a sharp mind and very resourceful. And, of course, very loving consapos. <laughs> Listen, would your ideal man have any favorite drink, Rosanna? <laughs> <laughs> well... So I could join him, even for a shot, you know. I Bang! wish his drink would be Tandue. Yes, Tandue. We'll give you a shot. Remember, Samaga in in Gangalang. <laughs> Tandue Distillery, Luzon, the Philippines. Say, uh, ten lovely 16-year-old girls who had never gone out on a single date were officially presented to President Dudley Traderia of the Adelaide, Australia Stake recently in one of the most colorful balls South Australian church members had ever seen. Wait a minute. <laughs> Whoo! Boy, that's something. I don't even have no comment Was for that, that a religious item? I don't it know. Is a, it is a religious item. That is why they call it, that is why they call it down under in Australia, because everybody is down under the weather. Also because it is the bottom of the world, you know, and the pressures are incredible there. The oceans keep falling over the land. The psychic pressures are I bet, terrible, I too, bet you, you know. Guys don't There's know. no one to talk to on the phone in Australia. There isn't, guys, no. Hey! What? <laughs> Step up closer to the microphone. No, I don't want to. I bet you guys uh, don't know what Yucatan, the country, the name come from. How much... No, okay, go How ahead. much Yucatan you can, you can bet? Listen. Do you Listen know to what? what the name Yucatan mean? Do you think I care? <laughs> the name Yucatan means what? I can't understand your accent, so how can I answer your question? Listen, listen, I am Inca. When the first Spanish guys <laughs> came... Certainly do. <laughs> they asked the Indians who was living there, what's what? the name of the country? And the Indians said, what? What are you talking about? Paso, and that's man. why you say Yucatan. 
Where is I don't Yucatan? say that. That means what? What are you talking about? Yucatan. Yucatan. So they say that's the name of this place, Yucatan. Boy, did he bust in just for that piece of information? <laughs> And he's angry, too, you I know. I don't know. That's a little bit of obscurantism, I think. I no, think so. No, I, you live there. <laughs> you know, it was similar linguistic difficulties like this that have started the great wars among our people. I should have Bronx, you know, comes from a uh, family. The Bronx family used to live up there. They used to give these big parties in yeah, the 1890s. You, you mean the, uh, the what family? The Bronx. Yeah, I know. The That's family. what they call it now. It used, it used to be used to go up to the what? Bronx. Yeah. To uh, have a picnic, see? Eh? Oh, oh, that yeah. ain't where it come from. Oh, the natives you up don't there. Know. No. It come from the drafts in the halls give you bronchitis. That's what it is. Everybody goes around going, bronk, bronk, bronk. That's where they live, you well, know? It's the yeah. Titus family. The Titus family. They're the Titus ticks. They never give no parties. We call that T-neck now. You do, huh? You ever, you ever go into a T-neck party in Yucatan? Eh? That's eh? where they're necking what? and smoking tea. That's where the Tauruses get high, man, in T-neck. That's know. right. I'm buying an octopus. Sorry, I just... I have this play that was delivered to me from... All I the way from down south. hear the wind. I could hear the sea. Even the octopus? I closed my eyes and I saw... Tangerine vintas and flying fish. And you myself. Should, you should riding the waves from the shores of... Zamboanga! Zamboanga next stop! This is uh, obscure story of Filipino playwright uh, trapped in absurd drama! With the famous Filipino movie star, Rosanna Ortiz. Here's a Rosanna praying on her harmonica as usual. Even the octopus? Yeah. Mm. Hundreds of them, and each one is dead. You should see it behind the peacock screen of blooming corals, its tentacles like the limbs of mermaid ballet dancers. I wish I could believe you. I'll be editor of our high school paper next year. I cannot imagine him young. He was fat and 40 when I married him. I was eight. I like you. What else do you see under the sea? Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Hundreds of them, and Rain. each one is dead. Rainbow-colored crabs and silver seahorses. And... Crabs? Wait a minute, I'm getting out of here. Crystal jellyfish. No, man, I'm not going to be in no more of these absurd plays. You see blue dolphins? No, no, give me some straight dialogue, man. What happened to that good old dialogue, you know, like we used to have? Like he... Arthur Miller, man. Arthur Great Miller, Chicago that was good stuff, right. man. You remember all that stuff? He talked about good stuff, man, like uh, windshields, you know? And, and fathers and, and cars, sons. Cars, cars, man. He knew how to talk about cars. No, suitcases, shoes. too, he man. Suitcases. To suitcases. suitcases, real things, you That's know? That's right. Mothers, man. What are, there, what are these playwrights about now with conches and seashells? I this remember means nothing. his great play, Death of a Shoe. That was wonderful. Of a shoe salesman. The death, 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 was that it? Yeah. I thought it was the shoes well, that was know. dying, you know, because oh. he, he was very old and his shoes lost no, their it tongue. Was deaths of a salesman, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, yes, it was. Sure, but the the guy is trying these to foreigners are wrong. Yeah. No, I don't think we we're wrong, but it's all well, right. I, because, I you know, they wrong, suffer man. by translation when yeah. they come down to. I'm a Jehovah's uh, Witness, and I will not allow any of my children to suffer a translation. Are you a, uh, you are a Jehovah's Witness? I certainly am. Maybe you can answer a few questions I've got here. some questions for <laughs> <laughs> you. As a matter of Good. fact, just sit there just for a minute. Someone hold him down. <laughs> I'll let him get away. Okay, there you go. Uh, Whit, uh, should you die at this moment, uh, where would you be five minutes later? Well, th that, what you are asking for me to give you is a fact, right? You're are you looking in that dictionary of existentialism? I'm looking in the Jehovah's Witness Existential Dictionary. Well, now we'll get a straight answer. And it says, the coherence of a fact, of any fact, is conferred on it by the mind that grasps it by the S understanding self, by famous existential poet Soren Ibid. I'll be damned. <laughs> you know his work. You will, yeah, too. You will, too. Well, we have if to. If you keep talking that way about uh, about the shoes and the conches and the little things under the... Oh, they, oh they're all dead? Do you think we can explain any of this to the president before See, he leaves? See, Jehovah's Witless. <laughs> <laughs> Get your hands off me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you sound much farther away than my hands can reach, you know. Uh, you got the long yeah, arm he, of the law there, Yes, Chuckle. I do, right. Yeah. Uh... Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm. Come on. No. <laughs> no. Come on. Say something. Uh, yeah. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Uh, when you are dead, you're done. 
And uh, don't look at me when you talk. To me, <laughs> okay, God. Avert your eyes. Uh, or I'll poke them out like this. Yeah. Ow! Oh, those are fake. Those yeah. Are yeah. Fake. What are those two steelies? Yeah. That's very good. Okay. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> First time he flipped the note this way back in 25 In a one-up, one-down home in Tennessee With the trophies round his door and a hundred tunes or more Old Obi Ramsey quit the Tessaline Well, he settled down near Asheville just a short while out of town And he grew tobacco on the mountainside In a string along with Bayard on occasions he would play Then soon to far more pick he must decide Oh, Gray Ramsey, go home Go home, you banjo picking man Why?